have a tutorial here about the Doppler effect. In the context of astronomy, uh, the Doppler shift is one of the more important things that we can observe about something in the sky. Um, the stars in our own galaxy are all so far away that over a human lifetime, we're not going to see them move appreciably uh, in the plane of the sky but they will have a Doppler shift and that tells us at least one component of their velocity, how fast they're moving along the line of sight, either towards us or away from us. So everything that we would want to apply like Newton's laws of motion to, we don't even have all of that full information because in general, we're just gonna have uh, the ability to measure one component of an object's velocity and that's just along the line of sight. So it is it is limiting but it is the only thing that we have so we have to make the most out of it. Um, so there are a lot of applications of the Doppler effect in astronomy to uncovering planets, to uh, uncovering binary stars and it's binary stars where you can measure the mass so that's the basis of stellar evolution. Uh, measuring the amount of dark matter in galaxies can come from measuring the Doppler shift uh, associated with rotational or orbital motion of stars and galaxies. Uh, so this is really our main way of getting at uh, the laws of physics and, and how they apply. All right. Because of the Doppler effect, light emitted by an object can appear to change wavelength do its motion toward or away from an observer. When the observer and the source of light are moving toward each other, the light is shifted to shorter wavelengths, and we call that blue shifted. When the observer and the source are moving away from each other, the light is shifted to longer wavelengths, and we call that red shifted. You may have scenarios with stars. So you have a star at rest, star moving away from the observer, star moving towards the observer, star moving at right angles to the observer. So consider the situation shown A through D. In which situation will the observer receive light that is shifted to shorter wavelengths? Well, that is case C. Will the light be blue shifted or red shifted in this case? That is blue shifted light. What direction is the star moving relative to the observer for this case? The star is moving toward. So the situation shown A through D. In which situation will the observer receive light that is shifted to longer wavelengths? That is case B. That is light that is red shifted. And what direction is the star moving relative to the observer for this case? that star is moving away from the observer. In which situations A through D will the observer receive light that is not Doppler shifted at all? Now in case A, the star is not moving. In case D, the star is moving but not at all along the observer's line of sight. no Doppler shift because no motion along the line of sight. All right. Imagine our solar system is moving in the Milky Way toward a group of three stars. Star A is a blue star that is slightly closer to us than the other two. Star B is a red star that is farthest away from us. Star C is a yellow star that is halfway between A and B. All right, we're gonna I'm just read through the questions and then we're gonna talk about this discussion. Which of the three stars of any will give off light that appears to be blue shifted? Which of these three stars of any will give off light that appears to be red shifted? Which of these three stars, if any, will give off light that appears to have no shift? And we draw out what the scenario is so we're clear. 
A is the one that is closer. B is a red star that is furthest. C is a yellow star that is halfway. And our solar system is moving in the Milky Way towards that group of three stars. So there's our sun, and that's the direction of its motion. All right, so we'll come back to these in just a second. Two students are discussing the topic of the Doppler shift. Since Betelgeuse is a red star, it must be going away from us. And since Rigel is a blue star, it must be coming toward us. Student two, I disagree. The color of the star does not tell you it is moving. You have to look at the shift in wavelength of the lines in the star's absorption spectrum to determine whether it's moving toward or away from you. So, student two is correct. Betelgeuse is red because the surface is cool, and Rigel is blue because the surface is hot. Um, the colors of those stars is not telling you anything about the motion. The stars in our galaxy are not moving anywhere fast enough to have their color shift uh, in a way that's discernible to us. What you have to do is look at the detailed spectrum. All right, so let's hop back up to four. The motion of the solar system is towards all three stars. So that means A, B, and C are all blue shifted. Which of the three stars, if any, will appear to be red shifted? None of them. And which of the three stars, if any, will give off light that appears to have no shift? None of them. The solar system is moving towards all three. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna look at spectra next. When we study an astronomical object like a star or galaxy, we examine the spectrum of light it gives off. Since the lines of a spectrum occur at specific wavelengths, we can determine that an object is moving when we see that the lines have shifted to either longer or shorter wavelengths. For the absorption line spectra shown on the next page, short wavelength light, which is blue end of the spectrum is shown on the left-hand side, long wavelength light, the red end of the spectrum is shown on the right-hand side. Blue end, right end, red end on the right. For the three absorption line spectra shown, A, B, and C, one of the spectra corresponds to a star that is not moving relative to you, one of the spectra is from a star that is moving towards you, and one of the spectra is from a star that's moving away from you. Which of these three spectra above corresponds with a star moving toward you? So moving towards me, I'm going to have to have a blue shift. So I'm going to have this pattern of lines shifted furthest to the left. And that's the case for spectrum C. Which of the three spectra corresponds with the star moving away from you? Well, to have uh, the star moving away from me, I'm going to have to have a red shift. So the pattern of four lines is all shifted furthest to the right. And that's the case for B. Right, part three. If two sources of light are moving relative to an observer, the light from the star that is moving faster will appear to undergo a greater Doppler shift. Consider the four spectra at right. The spectrum labeled F it is, a, is an absorption line spectrum from a star that is at rest. Again, note that the short wavelength blue light is shown on the left end of the spectrum. Long wavelength red light is shown on the right end. F corresponds to a star that's at rest. All right. Which of the four spectra would be from the star that is moving the fastest? Would this star be moving toward or away from the observer. So that's the one that is at rest. Which one has the absorption lines shifted the most? So this one is shifted by just a bit, this one's shifted by a bit more, and this one is shifted by quite a bit. 
and that is going to be G, and that is a blue shift, so it's moving towards us. The stars that are moving, which spectra would be from the star that is moving the slowest? Describe the motion of the star. So the one that had the smallest shift is D, and that's a red shift, so it's moving away. An important line in the absorption spectrum of stars occurs at a wavelength of 656 nanometers for stars at rest. Imagine that you observe five stars, H through L, from Earth and discover that this important absorption line is measured at the wavelengths shown in the table below for each of the five stars. All right, so when it's at rest, it's at 656, and then we see it, one star at 649, one at 660, 656, 658, 647 nanometers. So I just want to go through and tabulate what the shift is. So compared to rest, that's minus seven nanometers. This one is plus four nanometers. 656 still, so that's zero. 658 is at a shift of plus two nanometers, and 647 is going to be a shift of minus nine nanometers compared to the 656. Which of the stars are giving off light that appears blue shifted? So that means to a shorter wavelength, and so the shift is negative for H and L. Which of the stars are giving off light that appears red shifted? So that is shifted to longer wavelengths. So it's a positive shift, that's star I and star K. Which star is giving off light that appears shifted by the greatest amount if this light shifted to longer or shorter wavelengths? So the greatest change in magnitude is for star L so there's a shift in nine millimeters, nanometers, sorry. And that is to shorter wavelengths. Which star is moving the fastest? Is it moving toward or away from the observer? So the one that had the greatest shift is the one that's moving fastest. So it's L again, and that is moving toward. Which of the stars, H through L, would appear blue? Which of the stars, H through L, would appear red? I want to be really clear about this. You can't tell. Shifting by nine millimeters is not, I said it again, nine nanometers is not changing the color of the star as you're going to be able to perceive with your eye. Which of the stars is closest to Earth? Which of the stars, H through L, is furthest from Earth? Um, you can't tell their distance by what their Doppler shift is. The Doppler shift is telling you how that star is moving compared to your line of sight, whether it's moving towards you or away from you. It's not telling you how far away that star is. It's not telling you what color the star is. Figure it right shows a space probe and five planets, A through E, A, B, C, D, and E. The motion of the space probe is indicated by the arrow, so it's going down the page. The space probe is continuously broadcasting a radio signal in all directions. Which planets will receive a radio signal that is redshifted? So which one of these planets has uh, it's the line of sight velocity for the space probe moving away, and that's going to be planet A. Which of the planets will receive a radio signal that is shifted to shorter wavelengths? So which of these five planets has a line of sight to the spacecraft that's showing the spacecraft coming towards them? Well, that's going to be B and E. Will all the planets receive radio signals from the space probe that are Doppler shifted? 
Um, at this instant, no. Because there is no velocity along the line of sight for planet C or D. No, so no Doppler shift. So you can see our drawing. How will the size of the Doppler shift in radio signals detected by planets A and B compare? All right. So it is the same size in magnitude, so in absolute value. Because it's one is a velocity away, and the other one is the same speed, but the velocity is towards. Um, so one will have a positive shift, one will have a negative shift, but the shift in terms of uh, wavelength is going to be the same size. How will the size of the Doppler shift in radio signals at planets E and B compare? So for E and B, they're going to get identical Doppler shifts. They both have the same line of sight velocity for the spacecraft approaching. So they're both going to get radio signals that are blue shifted by the same amount. 